This is Vern Benham Grimsley with the Spiritual Renaissance Broadcast. The following is being brought to you by remote transcription from an outdoor address before the United Nations Association. One morning while reading a San Francisco newspaper article concerning the United Nations, I came across this classic typographical error. The printer had inadvertently transposed two letters in the words United Nations, the I and the T, and it came out in print, the untied nations. At times, one is tempted to think there is more truth than error in such a typographical transposition. This is a planet of sometimes bitter schisms. And even between wars, there have been so many tensions and hostilities during times of peace that one is tempted to reflect, if this is peace, it is a peace which passeth all understanding. Through advanced transportation and communication, our world has become a neighborhood, but it has not yet become a brotherhood. We are, writes Norman Cousins, global villagers. There is enough on this planet to supply the needs of humanity, but there is not enough on this planet to supply the greeds of humanity. And clearly, if we would shed more perspiration in the making of peace, we would shed less blood in the making of war. Yet in the final analysis, only transformed men and women can create a transformed world. Only better individuals can fashion a better society. Only advanced citizens can architect an advanced civilization. Imagine, in the next few decades, twice as many people living on your block double the present population of your neighborhood, town, or city. Twice as many students in school, cars on the road, evangelists on the radio. Think of it. Twice as many Americans, Britons, Canadians, Russians, Chinese, Vietnamese, and all of this will happen within many of our lifetimes. How shall humankind respond? In ancient times, man was loyal only to his own immediate family. But as the centuries passed, man learned larger loyalties to his clan, his tribe, his village, his city, and then to his region or province, his state, and his nation. The hour is striking now when man must learn a love of family once more, as in the very beginning, only this time man must come to recognize his family to be mankind the universal brotherhood of man and sisterhood of woman, the worldwide family of God. The Welsh poet Dylan Thomas once said that he wrote all of his poetry, quote, in praise of God and love of man, and I'd be a fool if I didn't. One day this very planet thus will live. In praise of God and love of man, there can be no better way to live. The great tragedy of the American Civil War in the 1860s has often been described as the fact that brother fought against brother. Yet according to the teachings of the great world religions, that precisely has been the tragedy of every war. That all men are brothers on this earth, whether by blood relation or not. That all are members in one worldwide family of God. Recently I conversed with an international student at the University of California, a German girl, she related that one of the most interesting conversations she had had while in Russia was with a young university student in Moscow. This Russian youth had said to her that he thought religion was going to be the primary downfall of America. My friend asked why, and he replied that he believed religion was the most divisive element in U.S. culture. He delineated how all the different religious sects and denominations in the U.S. disagree and argue and bicker and reiterated that he believed religion to be a central cause of inner decay and instability for any nation. Yet equally as dramatic as the ability of nationalistic religion to divide a people in hatred is the equivalent capacity of globally oriented religion to unite a people in love. And as the historian Arnold Toynbee has written in his History of the World, a spiritual awakening based on a worldwide religion of love is the greatest need of our planet in this century. In earlier days of human history, each family used to grow, make, or produce whatever it needed to live. But the typical modern family grows, makes, and produces hardly any of the things it possesses. Contemporary citizens depend on local merchants who depend on distributors, who depend on manufacturers, who depend on importers, who depend on world market conditions to supply those manufacturers, who supply the distributors, who supply local merchants, who supply us with the things we need and use. Each one of us, by the things we own, the food we eat, the clothes we wear, and the ideas we think, each one of us is vitally linked to the rest of the world. 
Picture in your mind an American woman wearing the latest French fashion, a pair of Italian shoes, an Irish linen handkerchief in the Brazilian leather handbag at her side, sitting in a Danish modern chair with a Persian rug on the floor, a Swiss watch ticking at her wrist, a Chinese jade ring on her finger, an English hairdo, Mexican silver earrings, smoking a Dutch cigarette with Turkish tobaccos, using a brass ashtray from India on a Burmese teakwood table with a cup of Colombian coffee on it. She's reading the Russian novel war and peace as a Japanese transistor radio plays a selection by Beethoven, a German in the background, and then tell me this world is not one family. We are, in fact, one family. As the master of masters taught, the worldwide brotherhood of man beneath the sovereign fatherhood of God. A famous Chicago psychiatrist, Dr. William S. Sadler, long kept this sign on the wall of his office. The world is dying for need of just what you are wasting on yourself. Pity, sympathy, and energy. The need for a spiritual renaissance is the preeminent requisite of this century. Thomas Edison once wrote, the greatest discoveries will be along spiritual lines. This is the field where miracles are going to happen. Spiritual power is the greatest underdeveloped power and has the greatest future. Close quote. Those were the words of Thomas Edison. And wrote Omar Bradley, we are a nation of nuclear giants and ethical infants. 20% of America lives in poverty. Two-thirds of the world population go to bed hungry every night. With problems such as these on this planet, how egregiously absurd to diffuse our human energies in warfare and revenge. How much longer before we beat our swords into plowshares and our spears into pruning hooks and the world shall not learn the ways of war anymore? Human beings can blueprint a better world with pen and ink, but we must construct that better world with men and women. And for that, we must have better men and women. Not until human beings are remotivated by higher ideals and spiritual energies can this world fulfill its highest potential. If men and nations are motivated only by voracious selfishness, warfare, hatred, and territorial hostility will be inevitable. Only a new birth of goodwill among our fellow global villagers can bring the era of peace humankind so long has longed to see. When Thomas Alva Edison invented the electric light bulb, worldwide distribution was inevitable. For mankind had lived for centuries by flickering torchlight, tallow candles, and kerosene lanterns. But at last, a new and superior method of illumination had been discovered, and the world was eager to receive this new light. For centuries, mankind has likewise stumbled in the pre-dawn spiritual twilight of selfishness, violence, warfare. But shall we who have stumbled in darkness choose to refuse the light? There is a spiritual renaissance dawning in our day, which one day is going to make more differences in this world and the way this world is than any war which has ever been waged, any battle which has ever been fought, any governmental, political, social, or economic upheaval in all of human history. The reason so many political, social, and international reform movements have failed during the last 50 years is that they have attempted to change the world without changing individuals. They have sought to transform society while neglecting the character of man, and that is the ultimate futility. Most disasters occur to humankind. Tornadoes, volcanic eruptions, earthquakes, hurricanes. But warfare is a man-made disaster. It is a calamity which, with methodical preparation and well-planned execution, humankind inflicts upon itself. And just as modern medicine no longer employs the technique of bleeding or bloodletting as a cure of disease, which was done on the dubious theory that it was thereby possible to let the poisons, bad blood, and even evil spirits out of the patient's body, so modern humankind will one day abandon the international bloodletting of warfare. Cooperative spiritual unity can bring a new day on this earth. It took over 9,000 different business corporations working together to put America's first man into space. The greatest endeavors of humankind have been cooperative endeavors, consisting of many people laboring in unity to carry out their ideals. And one day, this very world itself will learn that in unity and love, there is not only joy, but strength. 
A worldwide religious renaissance could solve the major problems of this world. How do wars begin? They do not start on the battlefield. They may end there, but they do not start there. Wars do not begin when the first bullet is fired, but when the first suspicion is nurtured. Wars do not begin with artillery in the field, but with animosity in the mind. Violence between human beings is the result of violence within human beings. There must dawn a spiritual renaissance upon this troubled world. From the ancient Assyrians, we learned the building of libraries and postal systems. From the Babylonians, a knowledge of astronomy and the molding of clay bricks. From the Egyptians, we learned surveying. From the Persians, international coinage. From the Phoenicians, a written alphabet. From the ancient Greeks, we learned music, drama, architecture, philosophy. And from the early Romans, the making of bridges, roads, and laws. But from Jesus of Nazareth and our other great spiritual teachers, we have not yet learned the ways of righteousness and peace, the brotherhood of all mankind beneath the sovereign fatherhood of God. And until we do, the rest that we have learned will matter very little. There must dawn the consciousness that every human being is a citizen not only of his town, his country, his congressional district, his state, his nation, his continent, his hemisphere, and his world, but that above all this, every human being is a citizen of the universe itself, an inhabitant of the very starry spans of space, a member in the universal family of God, a child of the infinite, the infinite father of all of cosmic creation. We live in but one world and in one family of God. And God is calling humankind to a wider loyalty than narrow nationalism. God is calling humankind in this hour to a planetary patriotism, to the love of all who walk this earth wherever they may walk it, as sons and daughters of the living God. For all mankind are one vast family, this world our home. We sleep beneath one roof, the starry skies. We warm ourselves before one heart, the blazing sun. Upon one floor of soil we stand and breathe one air and drink one water and walk the night beneath one luminescent moon. The children of one God we are and brothers of one blood and members in one worldwide spiritual family of God. I thank you very much. The preceding has been brought to you by remote transcription from an outdoor address before the United Nations Association. If you're interested in these topics, write to us. We want to hear from you at the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, Box 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644. That's the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, or abbreviated SRI. For those of you listening in other countries around the world over our international satellite and shortwave network, let me spell the mailing address. SRI Box 3080, Oakhurst, O A K H U R S T, California, C A L I F O R N I A, 93644, United States of America. I've written Finding God, Getting to Know God, Seven Principles of Prayer, Life After Death, What Does Happen When You Die? If you're interested in these topics, no cost, no charge, no obligation. Nobody's going to come to your door with an attache case and try to sell you something. Simply write to the Spiritual Renaissance Institute Box, 3080 Oakhurst, California, 93644, USA. Broadcasting from the equator to the ice caps. Reaching Europe, Asia, Canada, and North America, Africa, Australia, and the British Isles, their cities and ships at sea. This has been the Worldwide Family of God radio broadcast proclaiming the dawning spiritual renaissance, the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man, the worldwide family of God. And so for now, this is Vern Benham Grimsley saying, may God's will be done by you. Good day. <laughs>